welcome you to this to the uh, session four, which is uh, a mixture of a number of presentations from the Bison project, but also about different topics like defragmentation approaches and strategic uh, agenda, st strategic uh, activities. So uh, we will have three presentations uh, in person, and the others are online. But I think we know how to, to handle that. Um, could you give me the first slide, please? Or can you make this the computer visible? Ah, great. So I will, I will uh, start this session with a presentation from the Bison project. And it is uh, part of the Bison project has, has uh, three, no, has actually five work packages, but three that, uh, that produce the thematic content. And this is part of the third uh, work package, which is, uh, which is about the, this, uh, the existing and, and future synergies and, and, and challenges between biodiversity and infrastructure. We have the task to take a step back and look at the emerging trends and the future challenges. So what is the big picture? The, the main question is, where do we go to? What what's lies ahead? <clears throat> and uh, we did this in a, in a huge group of, of experts from, from different countries. You see all the lists down here. Uh, you can also download the report from the Bison website. So. Um, what I'm going to present you now is, is a very broad overview, so don't be uh, shocked by the lack of details and graphs. Let me see. Okay. So, an important question that we, that we um, had was, what is the world going to be in the future when we just continue with business as usual? And there are plenty of studies suggesting, su suggesting uh, that, for example, we will, that the human population will increase um, constantly, of course. So we know that, that we will probably have more than 9 billion people on Earth. 70%, we believe, is, will be living in cities. So the majority of the human population will be in a very cramped space. People hope that the gross domestic product can be increased fourfold in the next years. So there's a surge in, in the living standards all around the world, hopefully. Um, that may lead to an over threefold increase in the transport demand. So the transport agencies and the, the automobile uh, manufacturers are very happy. They have a brilliant future ahead. We will also need to, and, and yeah, we will need to, uh, to, to, to support this increase in transport demand, we will need to build much more infrastructure, many more roads and railroads, um, especially in the developing countries, but don't forget also in, in Europe, and especially in the, in the eastern parts, of course. Um, these new infrastructures will be populated by over two billion cars if we just continue as we did before. And um, I believe this estimate of a 30% increase in energy demands is still quite uh, conservative. So it's quite clear that you, know, you, know, you all know about that, that. If we continue with the business as usual, we are heading into an unsustainable future. Oh, sorry, I forgot to, to uh, continue. At the same time, we see that there are investments needed to, to uh, support this development. Uh, over 94, let's say 100 trillion US dollars will be needed to invest in new infrastructure. And there have been estimates that, there will, that we will lose another 150 trillion US dollars because of the, the damages we cause to ecosystems and biodiversity. And then there will be several hundred trillion US dollars again that we will lose from effects of global warming. This just underlines that they, the, the future is not sustainable. We need to make a change. But it's not the climate change that we need to do. 
of course, as you understand. I'm not going into details, as you, as you understand. But there, the interesting thing is then, when we look at what is going on right now, there are several trends, several developments going on that both provide opportunities, give us hope, but also uh, impose challenges that we need to deal with. There are the techn technological innovations, for example. There are, there's new infrastructure. Uh, we ha but on the other hand, we have, to we have to adapt infrastructure to climate change. We have to deal with the invasive species that uh, is becoming a growing problem. That we have rewilding effects, um, more of the more common animals probably in, in our vicinity. We have tools like the nature-based solutions that we can Im employ. So there, there is a, a lot going on um, that we have to relate to. So let's start with the technological trends here. And you're probably well aware of that there are three major pillars in this that has been put forward from many, country, from many companies and, and organizations. So we can summarize this, these technological trends by saying that the future transportation is likely to be electric, automated, and connected. You can read this on Volvo's website on uh, sustainability and yeah, you name it. So this is the, the three mantras of the, of the future transportation. Um, there's a lot of power in this, of course. Uh, we, we can do very much with that. Uh, to improve the situation. What is not really talked about very much is that these two, that these three options, and especially the, the second and the third, provide us a, th a fourth pillar that we, I think, should work with much, much more. And this is the opportunity to share transportation. When transportation becomes more intelligent, we can share transportation, and by that we can reduce the demand for transportation. So one lecture from, one, one lesson that we draw from this is that we need to and can uh, reduce the demand for unnecessary transportation. We don't need to travel as much as we needed before. That, <clears throat> that requires that we increase, on the other hand, the accessibility, not to transport, but to the resources that we are transporting ourselves towards. So a reduction in mobility is needed, and, but it's the unnecessary mobility, of course, that we are focusing at. At the same time, the opportunity is also to create an, a safer transport system. Safer for people, but also safer for wildlife. There are many options, and we will hear about this later as well, where we can, can reduce the impact on, on wildlife. Another issue is the climate change that we have to adapt to. Uh, we have to rebuild big bridges, road embankments, you name it. There's, there are many problems that the, our climate change uh, impose on infrastructure. But at the same time, these problems give us the opportunity to provide better solutions for biodiversity. We can enlarge bridges, for example, to include all the uh, ecosystem, the aquatic e ecosystem. And these, these opportunities must be seized. We must yeah, learn to take advantage of that. Another important tool are, this, are the nature-based solutions. There is very much going on. It's, it's, a, it's a huge field that is under development. Um, but we, we need to better understand how we can deal with the um, nature-based solutions in the infrastructure. We don't know exactly what kind of nature we want to have near infrastructure. Um, um, and how, we de how do we deal with the maintenance um, uh, problems with that? And also, if we increase nature in infrastructure, we may get into conflict with the, in with the invasive species and with other species of concern that uh, increase in numbers, uh, like wild boar or many other deer species, for example. Infrastructures, you know, they, that infrastructure areas can work as a corridor, and traffic can work as a vector to spread, to help the spread of species, but many of them can be invasive and alien to the, to the native surroundings. So we, we need to address that and solve that in a way. 
And it's important for the Transport Administration to realize that the, this part, the dealing with, with biodiversity, whether it's negative or positive, is unnecessarily becoming is, uh, a, a bigger task for, for them. They have to, to, to deal and, and manage that in a much better way, and this will, this will be costly. Then another important field is the, um, is the um, more complex nature of the impacts that uh, infrastructure and transportation has on the environment. Here we're talking about the cumulative impacts. We have, as you know, when we, when we build a new road, there will always be secondary development. Um, there will be cascade effects that we have to deal with. And these cumulative impacts are complex and um, difficult to, to grasp. We need to improve that. Uh, we need some kind of a collaborative governance of, to, to deal with and address these uh, cumulative impacts. Um, there may be regulatory frameworks that need to be developed first that they're not existing yet. And by looking at this, this complexity, it, it becomes very clear that we need to increase the public participation. We must not forget people, even if we, if we talk about and are concerned about biodiversity. So the social and economic dimensions, but especially the social dimensions, are something that we, that we I think, must put much more emphasis on. We have to, and that is also an important tool, we have to internalize um, the external costs. We need to know what is, what, the, what is the actual impact of transportation on the environment and on, on people. And these costs must be included. So transportation must become more expensive. Um, we need to involve people, as I said. This, this means that we need to develop um, participation participatory approaches, um, routines that, that involve the people. But many of these changes may not be possible if we don't have a, a stronger governance at the same time. So just to be very short, uh, the main messages that we could summarize is uh, the, the focusing on the mobility, uh, well, you see, holistic uh, approaches, internalize and improve. So we could say, lesson number one is reduce transportation. Reduce the need for mobility. Don't travel so much. And I believe, and if you read in the report, there are actually options to do this, and this will not hamper with the development of our society and the economic development. Instead, it can actually be positive. We need to address this problem in a holistic way. We need to we need to include both people and nature and climate. If we only focus on one of these, we will not succeed. And we need to make clear that the impact that we create with the transportation has a lot of external effects, and we need to consider these when we plan infrastructure and transportation. So internalize the externalities, as it's so nicely called. And finally, we see that there are many opportunities to improve the situation. Uh, let's gain from, from these opportunities, let's seize these opportunities to make a better road or a better infrastructure. We need some practical guidance, but we already have that, you know, we have the handbook, so let's use this handbook in a much more, way, in a much more um, efficient way. We need innovation and research. There are still questions that has to be addressed. We need the public involvement, stronger governance, and we need joint visions. And I think the last point, the joint visions, is something that we, that we should not forget, that we must not forget. So let's develop an, a vision, and that could be something like that. Let's build better roads and not more. Thank you very much. So one minute for questions. I think I see you all agree. That's fantastic. There's an 
anonymous support for this approach. If you are interested, look at the, at the Bison report. Um, you will certainly have the link, otherwise just ask me or somebody else for the, for the link to the website. Yes. Uh, no, uh, nine, three trillions. It, it, does it come from uh, uh, extrapolation from the past evolution? Yes. 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 That doesn't integrate how um, the world population will uh, react to uh, the effects, direct and indirect effects of climate change and all the uh, socio-economical problems that will occur. That that may be less, in fact. Yeah. No, if we. <laughs> if we include the possibilities of uh, the effects of climate change on the human population, there is a, there is a big uncertainty and, and the, the, the path can be quite different. I mean, the risk is that it's quite catastrophic. And we may see human migration playing a much bigger role in the future, in the next 20, 30 years. And this can havoc the entire system. And we need to address that in a completely different way, probably. Um, yeah, but this will explode the scope of this. But we are, we are working in the Bison project, we are working also with the scenario building. So we try to, to foresee more detailed what can be done and what are we heading towards. There will be a presentation on that uh, on Friday. Thank you very much. Questions from the online?